Hi, I'm Edmund. Hi, I'm Scholar. And today we're talking about racism. Am I? I don't know what you're doing. So, Scholar, what is racism? I think racism is just when you judge somebody or you have a dislike for somebody, any kind of negativity around a person mm -hmm. purely based on their race and just that kind of like any st stereotypes that you might have. You mentioned stereotypes there, so what, you know, what's a stereotype? Well, it's what you tend to see in the media, just sort of like they, they don't really look at the bigger picture and don't really look at like individuals mm -hmm. and just think it's like just a blanket sort of thing for everyone. Do people always know that they're doing that? So I think there is that sort of like balance of some people who definitely know that they're racist and they're very obvious about it mm. and then there are some people that I think it's just a case of needing more education to know what is racist and what isn't and what's okay and what's not. What are some examples of racism? Calling somebody names and I guess I get that a little bit you know being on YouTube and making videos um, some people might comment just like inappropriate comments to do with my race and they're all like negative ones. I mean what about jokes a lot of people kind of you know talk about stereotypes when they make jokes and, yeah. and there's that kind of banter. Just realizing that you know it could become a form of abuse basically mm -hmm. and just because you're not punching somebody doesn't mean it's any different. It's still a form of abuse, just mm. verbally, and it can really, really affect someone emotionally as well. Yeah, I mean, also, it might not affect you, but it might affect someone kind of who overhears it as well. Exactly. You never know who might be listening in. Just because one person from a particular race is okay with a certain thing, the other person might be completely not okay with it. And it's important to sort of take that into account and not walk around thinking that everyone's the same and everyone has the same beliefs and opinions. So how can you make sure you're not acting on prejudice and stereotypes? I think it's just best to think about how you would feel if you know, whatever you're about to say or do, how would you feel if someone were to do or say that to you. But at the same time, you, don't, you may not have the same experiences that somebody else does. So it's important to also ask people, like there's no shame in just asking somebody, is this offensive, is what I'm about to say wrong? And I think there's a certain way of approaching that where you can, like a person will know you're not trying to, you know, be offensive in any, in any way. So don't be scared to actually just reach out and communicate. I don't even think it's about just asking them, but also go out and reach out to different races and cultures and just become friends with different types of people. Mm. You start to see them as individuals rather than just races. And I think that's something even I did when I was younger because I lived in a very small village. I wasn't exposed to different kinds of races. So I just had assumptions and I didn't really know much. But as soon as I like sort of like explored and got different friends and like sort of researched different cultures, it opened my eyes and I realized that, you know, there are certain things I was doing that was like wrong. And mm. I think just doing, just being a bit more open-minded really helps. And sometimes if you kind of stop and think about, about a situation yourself, uh, that might help as well. I think it is just a great way of just reflecting on your behaviour and what you do say to other people. But I know for some people, like the experience of racism to them is so foreign. And to some people, it's completely invisible. If it's not directed at your race, you might not even notice, you might not even know what's going on. So that idea of stopping and thinking is amazing. And I think it really can help. And what about things that are reinforced in the media, on the news, for example? I think we're in a day and age where it's really important to just be very critical about anything you read or you see. So I, I think it's always important just to keep that in mind and make sure that you're getting your information from loads of different sources because then you come up with your own opinions and you come up with a better view of the world as well. Um, and also, I think we're in a really exciting time where like, we're in control of the media as well and mm. we're making the narrative through social media. And what can you do if you're being treated badly? So I think sometimes when you're just harboring anything that's going on by yourself, it can feel really heavy and you can start getting really upset. So I think just letting people around you know what's happened to you so that you know you're supported and you're not, you know you're not alone, I think is really important. That's something I always used to do growing up with racism because I was like the only black kid in my school at one point. And in my year, I think I was pretty much always the only black kid. So I always found that sharing with my friends what's going on also helped educate them because they, it opened their eyes to what I was going through. And now if anything happens, I just go and tell my family and explain to them online. If anything happens, I report it because it is illegal and it shouldn't be allowed. So.
How can people look after themselves while this is going on? Just making sure that you keep people around you, that keep you feeling positive and happy and makes mm -hmm. you feel safe is always really good. Focus on those positives in your life. Yeah, definitely. I think um, one important thing is never to let any of this negativity get you down because it has nothing to do with you and it shouldn't upset you because there's nothing wrong with you at all. So what are your top tips for helping a friend if they're a victim of racism? I think the first thing is to make sure that they know that they're loved and that they are perfect the, the way they are, basically, because mm. I think in that situation, first of all, they're going to feel a little bit insecure. So it's definitely important to build their confidence in that moment. And secondly, it's important to speak out and report the issue to anybody um, so that it's dealt with and that it's not something that becomes ongoing that would really upset a friend. So thanks so much, Gola, for coming in and talking to me today. Thank you for having me. See you next time. Bye.